All right, guys, Good Boy 32 here. Check it out. So what are we looking at? This is the upper from the Palmetto State Army 6.5 Creedmoor. 20-inch barrel, stainless steel. Love this rifle. This guy is accurate. Using the right ammunition, you can reach out to a mile with this bad boy. What have I done? Well, I don't know that I've actually even cleaned this thing since I've received it. So, yeah, bad for me. But uh, one of the things that I wanted to do today is I want to go ahead and do a thorough cleaning. Uh, we're going to incorporate this guy right here. This is the endoscope from Teslong. We just did a video review on it. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hit the record button so we can take a look at this thing. Now, I've got this uh, really cool guide system in here, and I'll show you what I did right here. But what that does is it secures that bad boy up in there. But let's take a look at what this bore looks like. And one of the reasons why I wanted to do this and another reason why I bought all this stuff, and I got this on Amazon, uh, is because of the, when I did the video comparison last week and saw the carbon buildup in this barrel, carbon fouling, it almost looked like somebody had just taken a torch to it and baked on the grime. Look at that crap. And, and what I want to do is, look at that. I want to go ahead and use this cleaning solvents we actually we got the big old heaping helping hop of hops nine but we're going to start out with the carbon remover from Bortec, and then i'm going to finish up with the cu plus two copper remover now one of the cool things my good friend x-ring has got a detailed video look at that look how nasty that is it's got a detailed video on how to properly clean these barrels out and it's really neat to see what he uses as far as a uh brass wire brush, the copper remover, the pins, the push. This is a Tipton rod with the proper jag. It's sized properly. So we're going to go ahead and clean it. And then what I'd like to do is every time we run a couple brushes through or a couple patches, we're going to go ahead and bore scope it to see what's going on. So Anyway, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and pull a couple patches out. This is just going to be a process. If my head gets into the video, I'm sorry, but I just figured out what all this is for. You take your little brush or your, your patch right here. Now, these are sized for the 6.5 Creedmoor. They are square patches. I'm going to put it on the end of the jag, just like this. I'm going to stick it in here, just like that. And the cool thing about this stuff, now I've got a squeeze bottle right here with some of the carbon, carbon remover. I can go ahead and use it. <laughs> Anyhow, stick that in there like that. Now let's go ahead and run a patch through it. Now, really cool deals. I'm using my Caldwell Precision Turret to hold the barrel in place and then tip it down. And that's done a real good job. Uh, okay. So now we can see how nasty it's looking. So let's run a couple more through it. I'm going to get and clean this mess up. I don't know what the hell. <sighs> uh, this patch has ran right through the proof barrel, but they are not liking this stuff. Maybe they're too dry. I don't know. Look at that. Now I will tell you this. <sighs> I might have to downsize these things a little bit. It's coming out with some actual grunk. Let's run that uh, war scope through it and see what we got. Here we go. It's getting it. Look at that. Let's let that soak for a few seconds. And then what we'll do is I'm going to run a uh, wire brush through it. Look at that. A lot different from what we had before. You can actually tell where it's coming out. Let's take a look at the gas port. Yeah. Really cool. Let's let that soak for a second. All right, so one of the things I did with this little guide rod thing here is I just took one of my uh, microfiber cloths and cut it down to where it would wrap up at about a two-inch area right there and keep it centered up in the receiver section, which I thought was a cool idea, just in case you wanted to know.
All right, so now that that thing's set up for a little bit, I want to go ahead and run a dry cloth through it just to see what's going on here. I cut the corners off of these these uh, things just because they were really tight. It was annoyingly tight. Ugh. Let's go ahead and see what we got. So yeah, look at that. That's getting some really good stuff. Let's keep going. Now, this Bortec stuff is slimy. It's got a rather unique feel to it for sure. <sighs> okay. <sighs> that barrel is just nasty. When you have to apologize to your barrel, you know it's bad. <clears throat> okay, let's do the endoscope and see how we're looking. Make sure that thing's in the upright position. First thing I want to do is we want to use the gas port is our point of reference and you can see right there look at that it's coming clean for sure but we still got a long ways to go and I think that's getting down to the copper and what we want to do now is I want to go ahead I'm gonna run that wire brush to it and take some of that stuff out of there dry patch it one more time and then we'll go with the uh, copper remover You can actually see the uh, the print from the lands on there. Wow. All right, we'll gonna cut some of these patches up again. Stand by. All right, so we now got a few more patches cut. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna dry patch it and then we'll run the scope through it again with this thing. So let's do this. We're gonna go ahead, I've run a couple of dry patches through it and let's see how this thing looks. There we go. Chamber's bad. Lands look good. I guess if you wanted to do it real detailed, you would take each land, document it, and fill, file it up, follow it all the way up. unique mark that's looking a lot better all the way out to the end look at that okay let's go ahead and start our decoppering copper remover so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put a cleaning patch on here and we're going to add some copper remover and hopefully it'll actually go in the barrel there it goes there now there we go see the uh the blue how that looks dripping out the other end. 
as you can see, we're picking up some copper. All right, real quickly, what we want to do is I want to run the endoscope through here. Uh, man, those patches do not like that rifle. Anyway, wrong item. All right, here we go. Let's make sure my thing is tightened up. Let's take a look at the uh, gas port as our first point of reference. Go ahead and get in here. Look at how pretty that is. That's looking good. Wow. There's a gas port. Holy smokes, what a huge difference. A little discoloration, but that's not any buildup. Look at those lines cutting across there. Well, we didn't have that before. Must have been that brush. Anyway, we don't have that copper fat or that fouling, the carbon fouling that we had before, where it was just caked up. So yeah, man, this stuff does a really good job. There's your before and after. Let's go ahead and take a look at that uh, gas port one more time. Where are you at? That's tons better. Loads better. All right. I know this was boring. It was a fun watching me wrestle this thing around, but now we got a clean barrel that we can shoot with. It's Boy 32. Uh, I'd like to get, you know, take a look at this Bortec ink. Uh, not bad stuff. Carbon remover. Did a really good job as well as that copper remover. All right. If you would, please also check out the link below. My good friend X-Ring. He's a wealth of knowledge. He is professional in the industry. And uh, he is my go-to counselor and mentor with all this cool long-range stuff. The guy is just a cat's ass. All right. That being said, God bless America. God bless his men. Women in uniform, 24-7 for our freedom. Freedom comes with a clean bore. Because you always got to, you know, have a clean bore. Go to Boy 32. I'm out. Turn this thing.